There are 156 crore mobile phone users in India right now and the numbers are only going to go up. Even right now as we speak, there are people buying our phones, they are purchasing them on online, they're going to stores and buying it. So the mobile industry in India is at its peak. But if we are able to buy these phones at a cheaper rate right now and everybody has access to this, how are we recycling these devices? So in today's video, let's talk about how carbon neutral are our phones that we're currently using. Is there a way we can make them completely carbon neutral? Is there an effort being put by different companies to make them carbon neutral? And if there's anything that we guys as users can do to make these devices more eco-friendly, recyclable, and have a better future for our planet Earth. <laughs> The reason why carbon neutrality is important, it's not just with respect to how we recycle or repurpose these devices, but also with respect to health and safety. There are harmful substances and chemicals in the battery of these cell phone devices, which can sip into your water source and lead to health issues. And the second reason being is the amount of precious metals in our cell phones. One ton of discarded cell phones can yield you around 300 grams of gold. Compare that to the gold ore which is mined out, one ton of gold ore can only yield you around five grams of gold. So in a way, if we recycle our devices, it's an easier way to get rich as well while maintaining our planet Earth. Since we're talking about carbon neutrality with respect to cell phones, there is one company that does need our attention. Let me show you the hidden impact of the smartphone industry and how Fairphone is acting to change that. That is the Fairphone company. Fairphone company has just launched their Fairphone 4. They have had previous iterations of these phones as well. But the reason why I'm even bringing this company into place is not because it gives you an option to upgrade your phone, repair your phone, and also provides you five years of warranty, but it's also because that's the first company which has a zero carbon footprint. So they're completely carbon neutral. There's no other manufacturer who's been able to do that. Yes, they do not produce on a large scale. There are a very small number of devices that they produce. However, if they can achieve it, so can others. And in this case, let's discuss about two leading manufacturers who are globally well known. They have excellent brand presence, and they are the best competitors among themselves. That's Apple and Samsung. What are they doing towards carbon neutrality? Let's start off with Apple. Wait, no, we've already done that. Apple is already proud of the fact that they have achieved 20% of carbon neutrality in some part of the operations where production of the iPhone was concerned. For instance, iPhone 13 series of lineup, which was introduced last year, reduced around 15% less carbon emissions as compared to the iPhone 12 Pro or iPhone 12 series, which was launched previous year. That is a great achievement in itself, but they have distinguished their processes of identifying or reducing carbon emissions or going carbon neutral in five different steps. They have started with their designing, understanding how they design the phones so that it leads to a proper usage of the phone even when it comes to the end user or even being recycled. I think you always had to be a little different to buy an Apple computer. The second is manufacturing. There's the outer shell, there's the glass, there's the battery and the other mechanisms that go into place. There are even magnets in this place. So how the production of a cell phone device or an iPhone goes into place is also something that they've factored. The third is how it's shipped. How does Apple ship the device out to the end user and we as consumers receive the device? Because there's a lot that goes there. There's logistics, there's packaging, there's a lot more that is involved than we actually think of. Fourth is usage and that's where we come in. And it's not with respect to how we're using these devices to click selfies or play games. It's with respect to how long we can use these devices and then or how well can end users like us recycle these devices. But in spite of having a five point approach towards achieving carbon neutrality, Apple hasn't got there yet. Yes, they are at 20%. But we can do much more. And they say that they'll get there by 2030, but there are still a lot of things that they can do which will speed up the process. I feel that they should also use recycled materials or steel or aluminum for the production of iPhones. They're doing that for the iPads and their Mac machines, but not yet for the iPhone. And the second thing that they can also do, which is spoken about and also awaited for, is getting rid of the Thunderbolt port. If they switch to Type-C on an iPhone, imagine you can use the Type-C cable for your iPhone, your iPad, and also for your Mac computers. It's already there. Apple was one of the first companies to not include a charger in the box. And that did take the industry by surprise. And even us consumers were not really happy with that idea. But eventually, when we had started to understand that that leads to lesser carbon footprint because we already have so many chargers that are lying around in our house and then other companies followed suit and that is eventually helping them with achieving carbon neutrality. Meet 
Liam. I don't know if you have spoken about this video before, but you should check out the in-house robots that Apple has developed for recycling of their phones, which is going to automate this process, make it simpler and recycle devices faster and more efficiently. So they are working towards it. 2030 is their goal. But what about Samsung? So let's talk about Samsung now. Samsung is the biggest manufacturer of mobile phone devices in the world, direct competitor to Apple. However, they have not been able to keep up with the carbon neutrality game that Apple has been afoot with. But this year when they launched the S22 series, they were able to use 100% recycled packaging for the S22 series of lineup. Even the flimsy plastic which was included in the box was recycled plastic. But they're not using recycled plastic when it comes to production of their phones. Samsung doesn't really have an answer for this, but what they're currently doing is they're working with other brands or other organizations and retrieving the discarded of fishing nets and recycling those. So that's how they're trying to maintain carbon neutrality. However, they are saying that by the end of 2035, they too will be working towards carbon neutrality by using renewable sources and also recycling most of the devices. So the companies will do their part when it comes to carbon neutrality. But what about us end consumers? We too have to play our part. So we have to be vigilant about how we discard our phones or how we recycle our phones. There are many kiosks which do give you an option of submitting your old phones and getting something in return. And also, if we can repurpose our devices to be used as something else to extend its lifespan, we should do that as well. This is Aurelius from Mashable India signing off. You guys have a great day ahead.